In this video, I'll take you through modeling a single die using your Google Sheets spreadsheet. Opening up Google Sheets, I'll go ahead and make a new spreadsheet. I'll start from scratch. Over here, I'll tell it I'm going to put in one die. One die. And might make that look a little bit more like it's a header row, just for fun. There we go. And the formula I'm going to use is equals int. That stands for integer, integer function. It will throw away all the values after the decimal point and give me a, a whole number. A random number generator right there. Tap out times the six sides I want. And because the integer function truncates, simply deletes the part after the fraction, I'm going to have to add 1. In other words, by itself, I would get numbers 0 to 5. By adding 1, I'll get 0 to 6. And so there's a 4. I'm going to tap on that, and then I'm going to drag my finger down, maybe down to 31 here. Give myself about 30 dice. Tap again on the blue, autofill. And the function has been filled down, and it's already rolling up numbers for me. Each of these cells contains the same function, each one randomly generating a number from 1 to 6. Those numbers will change as I work my way through this sheet. Over here, I'm going to go ahead and put in my classes. I'll just type that in up here. My classes, also known as intervals also known as bins, buckets, lots of different names you might see these called. And those will be the possible answers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, it's the only roles possible. The frequency function works a little differently in our Google Sheets app than it does and the desktop version. So we've got the frequency function. And I'll simply, I don't have to pre-select the cells with the frequency function. I simply type frequency. Open, oh sorry, I've got an open parenthesis running already. The tap here, I'll go ahead and drag down. Well, too far, well, I'll go back up. That's a little tricky to do this. There we go. Doesn't matter if I go a little too far, but I do have to include all the cells. I kind of like to get it right. Down to 31. Oh, I do want it to go down to 31. I'll come back and fix that in a moment. Comma. Then I tap these, drag down, press check. Uh, I do want one more of these. Tap, copy, tap, tap again, paste. And there's a, whoa, that's the one I got the, did you get the function in there? I didn't get the, the function. So let me go ahead and clear that from that cell. It didn't uh, didn't uh, did put the function in, so I'll have to do that a little bit differently. I'll drag it into position if I can. Yeah, there we go, and I've dragged it down into that cell. That gives uh, sorry, I have not. No one more. There we go. Tap again. Autofill. That should do it. That got the function in there. The reason I've done that is uh, I'll go ahead and. The sum of the frequencies is the sample size. And once you see the sum of the frequencies, bold on the right, you'll see P equals the sum function. Tap in the uh, frequencies there, and you see that's up to 30. I wanted 30. Makes a nice denominator for this particular case. Now, any side of the dice can come up with equal probability. There are six sides. There is one side that has the number one on it. There is one side with the number two, one side with the number three. The mathematical probability is the number of ways to get a result, the one side, divided by the total possibilities, all six sides, one over six. So that should be equal to one divided by six. Average, oh good, spelled it right for me. The average, not there. 
and put that over here equals the average I'll go ahead and tap that in tap drag check over here I'll just put in the word average I've already got the word type so I'll just type it back in lowercase average there we go I'll stick that same thing bold on the right just for fun the average is five if each of these was five, there's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there are six numbers times five would be 30. So in theory, each number should appear five times. Of course, it doesn't because this is a random rolling dice. Some, like number one, did appear five times. This is number five. But these others have appeared a different number of times. But the average is still five. In fact, if I go ahead and calculate the relative frequency, and again, my point to this longer video is to show you some of the things you can do from the, from the app itself and some of the manipulations you can make from the app and how to operate if you're working only from the app. So here I'm going to put in equals the frequency divided by the sample size, which is 30. And then I'm going to back up here to the D10, and I'm going to lock that on D10, press check. There's the frequency of the first one. I'm going to fill down, tap again to do an autofill. And then here, too, I'm going to put equals. The relative frequency should add up to one and it does it adds up to one the average should be equal to a number that if all goes well should be familiar point one six 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 that's equal to one side divided by six outcomes 1 over 6 is 0.1666666. So the average of the relative frequency is indeed 1 over 6. In other words, on average, each side will come up 1 in every 6 time. Uh, uh, the reality being, of course, different numbers will come up in actual rolls of the die. But this assures us that over the long haul, the mathematical probability is indeed going to work out to that average value, or it gives us some assurance of that. And again, the point here is to show you some of the things that you can do to manipulate a, inside your app, everything from column width to format to any, any particular thing you want to do or try to do from the app itself. It's available from here. So you can see these different things. If I want to auto size that, I can double tap it. A lot of capabilities are tucked away in this app. It's a very powerful app for working with numbers. Double tap, double tap. You can see I've got those columns resized. Let me go ahead and make a chart of this. I can't make a true histogram, but I can make a column chart of it that resembles a histogram. And there you see it. All I have to do is simply, uh, well, I'll take off the legend. I don't need the legend. But there's a histogram of the chart. If I do want to force it to roll the dice again, all I really have to do is alter the spreadsheet to do that. I, I can do that a number of different ways. Uh, one way is to just simply type a number and then a random location. And that actually forces it to rerun the calculations. Here you see we have an unusual number of rolls of sixes. Forty percent of our rolls of six uh, were rolls of six. And if I want to force it to calculate again, I just change this number. It'll calculate, and I get a new calculation. This distribution shape is actually uniform. Uh, so I demonstrated how to create an artificial die in the spreadsheet. The classes you can put it in and the frequencies for those particular classes. This is a mathematically predictable result, 
but the reality of actually rolling the dice is that other values will sometimes occur.